Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we are going to take a look at drones. What to expect, how they work in game, types of drones, and what you can use them for. Specifically, we're talking about unmanned aerial systems or vehicles here, UAS or UAV in military alphabet soup. These are the only kind of unmanned systems in commercial combat missions, so I'm just going to call them drones throughout. Probably the single most important thing to bear in mind with combat missions drones is that their capabilities, usage, and effectiveness do not line up with drone capabilities, usage, and effectiveness in 2025. Combat Mission introduced drones in Combat Mission Black Sea, a game which entered the concept phase in 2009, was released in 2014, and was projecting hypothetical capabilities to a then future 2017. As we've seen, drones and the digital camera equipment they use have come a very, very long way since then. Combining this with the black box that is combat mission spotting mechanics means that you should not expect drones to infallibly detect enemy units, especially if they are well-trained, stationary, and in dense terrain, that we are dealing with military industrial complex drones rather than commercial off-the-shelf ones, and that their offensive capabilities are strictly limited. With that out of the way, so far drones can be found in Combat Mission Black Sea and Combat Mission Shock Force 2. In game terms, they function as a kind of off-map support. Drones have their own tab next to the artillery and close air support tabs. To use them, simply select a unit, open the tab and select a drone asset exactly as if you were calling in artillery or air support. With the drone selected, you can pick between point, area, and linear observation missions. These determine the size and shape of the area the drone will observe. Increasing the area will decrease the spotting resolution, as it were, and thus the chance of spotting enemy units. It'll take the drone some time to get into position, but once it's there, it'll stay there observing until you cancel the mission or adjust it to send the drone somewhere else. Again, the in-game functionality is the same as artillery and close air support. We do have a couple of caveats, though. Firstly, and most usefully, a unit controlling a drone can call in other indirect assets. So if you need to target an area with artillery and you don't have direct line of sight, you can put a drone up and use that to get the LOS you need to call in a fire mission. Secondly, units in C2 contact with another unit controlling a drone can call in fires using the drone to spot. So you can use one unit to control the drone, and another unit to call for fires, providing they have some kind of verbal, visual, radio, or satellite comms contact. Third, it usually takes several minutes for drones to start spotting enemy units, and several more to move them to observe a new area. So they are considerably less reactive and flexible in-game than you might expect. That's really all there is to drones from a mechanical perspective. Beyond that, we can divide CM's drones into three broad types, small, medium, and large, each of which have some shared characteristics. The small drones are the RQ-11B Raven and the Zala 421-08. These are typically hand-launched, sometimes referred to as micro-UAVs. They're very small targets, especially at altitude, but they can be detected and destroyed by enemy AA assets. In addition, if the pixel truppen controlling a small drone is incapacitated, the drone crashes and is lost. For medium drones, we have the RQ-7B Shadow, Chela 1T, and Orlan 10. These carry laser designators as well as optics, which can allow you to use them to call in laser-guided precision artillery if that's available. Medium drones obviously have a bigger signature than small drones, so as well as being vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire, they can also be engaged by enemy surface-to-air missiles. The only large drone featured in CM so far is the MQ-1C Grey Eagle. This has a laser designator like the medium drones, but is also armed with four Hellfire missiles. As such, it can conduct strikes as well as observe missions. It also flies at a much higher altitude than the other drones, meaning that anti-aircraft fire can't target it, but it's vulnerable to both AAA and SAMs when it's conducting strike missions. All of these types of drones are present in Black Sea. Only the Raven and Shadow are present in Shock Force, which is set about a decade earlier. Whatever the type of drone, they have two broad use cases in combat mission. Observation, 
and calling in artillery beyond line of sight. Both of these roles are pretty self-explanatory, but there are a couple of elements to consider. First, it's important to think about matching a drone's intended role to the right unit. If you're trying to use a drone to direct artillery fire, it's probably best to get a forward observer team to control it. If you're using a drone to conduct aerial reconnaissance, it might be better to let a company or battalion HQ team fly the drone because they're in a good position at the top of the C2 chain to rapidly disseminate the details of anything they spot. Second, drones offer the ability to observe and destroy the enemy beyond line of sight. A key decision is whether to exploit that ability to operate in the enemy's depth, or to ignore it and use drones to supplement or support the capabilities of units at the pointy end. For example, it may be more beneficial to use drone reconnaissance in support of scouts who are likely to make contact than to spend time using a drone to search for juicy targets behind the lines. Alternatively, it may be important to keep an eye on choke points in the enemy's depth than reinforcing what you already know about the line of contact. Where to assign your drones is a key question that's going to depend on the terrain, the enemy, and your plan to deal with them. So, that is a quick overview of Combat Missions drones. I think we can safely say that CM's modelling has been somewhat overtaken by technological development, but they remain a super useful asset, and questions of when, where, and how to use them can be critical. Hope you all enjoyed this video and found it useful and interesting. If you'd like to support the channel and see these videos early, you can do so via Patreon and YouTube memberships. Whether you do or not, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.